uh, whatever your num your numbers and my numbers are going to be different. So um, the cash account, of course, is an asset. It's our number one asset here. And so for the cash account, whatever the cash is in the cash account, let's say you have $25,000 in the cash account. Let's say that's your number. You're going to put that there. Uh, equipment, we're going to have, let's say we have uh, $80,000 on this here. And then we're also going to have uh, a note payable. Possibly this note payable, right, is related to the equipment that we're given. And so let's say, for example, the note payable is going to be a liability, of course. This is going to be, let's say, for example, $30,000. Okay, the important part of this is we are looking here at the equal sign. So the numbers that you get and you're bringing down from your problem set, as you lay them out on, on both sides here, they should equal one another. Our services revenue. And so again, you're going to want to make sure that you are balanced. And so this service revenue number will balance this out. So that's, our, that's what we're going to do. You're just pulling the numbers down from the top and putting them into these places okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to take these accounts and we're going to move them over to a journal entry format so important things to note when we're doing journal entries the rules are that debits come first right so our items that we're going to debit are going to be cash is debits because we're getting cash we're receiving cash we're also receiving that equipment. So we're gonna have equipment as a debit and then our credits come second. And so our uh, note payable, I think on this one, right? Was a note payable. And then this is our revenue, our services revenue. Again, cash, equipment, we're increasing those accounts. Those are asset accounts and increase in an asset is a debit. Make sure you have those simple rules laid out for all of the uh, types of accounts, right? And, and what I mean by that is you're going to have your accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity right here, right? And so you're going to have your rule. The rule is on asset accounts, a debit on the left side is going to be an increase and a credit is going to be a decrease. On the liability side, because we're going past the equal sign here, right? So we're going to flip what we're doing here. And so the liability, when we get more debt or more of a liability, that'll be on the credit side. And uh, a decrease when we pay off our debt, that'll be on the debit side. So with equity, uh, generally speaking for equity, generally speaking for equity, it's going to be the same as liability. Increase equity is a credit. Decrease equity is a, is a debit. Uh, as we expand the accounting equation within equity, right? So we're going to expand the accounting equation here and we're going to include our four accounts uh, for, this is for uh, companies that are sole proprietorships and we're going to have our owner's capital account. That will follow the same rules as general equity. So because capital is our main equity account, that's going to follow the same rules. If we have a withdrawal, that's going to go opposite, right? If we take money out or if take assets out of the company, that is going to decrease equity, so that'll be opposite. Debit is going to be a uh, in, is going to increase our withdrawals, but decrease equity overall, and a credit is going to decrease our withdrawals and, and increase equity overall. So um, typically, it's just going to be uh, on the debit side, right? It's going to be our withdrawals. But now we're looking at the revenue here. All revenues, as we earn them, we record them, right? Our revenues are gonna be the same way as our main equity. Revenues as we earn them and we credit the revenue, that's more revenue, that's gonna increase our equity. Expenses, for all those expenses that we incur, that's gonna be opposite. Expenses are debits they will decrease equity overall. They're gonna be debits and uh, credit side, that'll be uh, decreased expenses. Um, typically we don't decrease expenses, right? Unless we're doing adjustments and, and those kind of things. Um, we're trying to fix accounts, but, but anyways, that's the rules.
that you need to follow, right? So those are important ones to just have written down, to have um, maybe print that uh, part out of the book, copy it out, have it with you. That's your cheat sheet to help you understand how to do debits and credits on this. And so as we move over, again, we're just gonna move what we did in the requirement B over to C. And so that's that we debited cash over there. So we're gonna debit cash here, debited equipment. So we're gonna debit equipment over here, right? These are ledger accounts or T accounts, right? These are T accounts. And so we're looking at doing the balances. This, These are just little teeny ones to kind of help us walk through the basics. But a very large ledger account would have lots of debits and credits and then you would find the balance at the bottom, right? Or keep the balance as you go rolling down. Uh, our notes payable is gonna be 30,000, I think is what I had there. And then of course our services revenue is here. So this will help you get that done. Your numbers are gonna be different. I'm just kind of walking you through it so you know what's going on here. So our next one, these are, these are really important ones. These are a little tricky for for students, so the way this works here is, again, we got a T account here, and so depending on the type of account we're working with, we may have the beginning balance on the debit side or the credit side. Whatever your normal balance side is, which if we flip back here to what we did before, normal balance for an account is on the plus side of the account. So if there's a plus, assets or debit normal balance, liabilities or credit, normal balances, equity accounts, it depends which account it is in equity and the normal balance on that is. So with this one, this one's a liability. So our normal balance would normally be on the credit side. So that's where we're gonna have our beginning balance is gonna be over here. And we're gonna put our number here, whatever that number is for that beginning balance. In this case, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be this number, right? 169. Our beginning balance for a certain month, say for October 1, October 1 in this case, our beginning balance is the ending balance from last month. So wherever we ended, right? Midnight of, of September 30th, very end of the month, midnight, that next second, right? When we begin October 1st and begin October, that balance is whatever it was at the ending of September, right? So it'll just roll on over. So that's why it's 169. That September 30 balance is our beginning balance in October. And then we're going to have our accounts payable here. Uh, we're gonna have more to pay off as we purchase more items on credit. And so these purchases that we're gonna make here are gonna put us further into debt. So that's our 298 in my case. Your numbers may are probably different. They may be the same if you're lucky, but usually they're different on here. And then we're gonna want at the very end, what you're gonna see here is we want the ending balance to be the ending balance on October 31st, which is 141. We can see that up there, right? We're just bringing it down here. And so what we wanna do is uh, but but these numbers, the beginning balance and the purchases are adding up to a much larger number. And the difference is this. How much do we pay off? Our payments, right? Our payments over here is what we're going to be tracking. And we don't know what those are yet. So we have to, we have to uh, figure out what the payments are. And so really it's just a simple math equation if you think about it. So this is going to be for all of your accounts what you're going to do. So you're going to have your beginning balance, whatever that is, if it's debit credit, doesn't matter. Whatever is on the same side as your beginning balance, that's going to add to it. That's what we're going to add to our beginning balance. So, so in this case, we're going to add uh, purchases. And then whatever's on the opposite side, is gonna be the subtraction and that's gonna be payments. And then the very bottom, our equal sign, right? We got our beginning balance plus purchases minus payments equals ending, our ending balance. In this scenario, we have three out of the four numbers. So we have our beginning balance, beginning balance check, we got that number. We have purchases check, we do not have payments. That's the one we need to figure out. We, we have the ending balance. So if we have three out of the four numbers, all we have to do is solve for the unknown. Solve for the unknown. This is X, right? So if we're thinking kind of algebraic, solving for the unknown, what are we gonna do here in this case? We're gonna add payments to both sides. We wanna isolate payments here, right? And then we wanna subtract ending from both sides 
to get the ending over here with our right so basically in the end what we're going to do is we're going to basically swap these two is what we're going to end up doing to solve if we take our beginning balance our purchases add that on subtract our ending then that will give us the payments that we're missing and then we plug that in and then it'll automatically calculate we want to make sure that ending balance number that shows up because it's auto calculated on this one is the number that you have for the october 31st balance so hopefully that helps that's going to be like all of the problems on here so b and c you're going to go through the same steps the thing that it may change is you may have your beginning balance on the debit side if it's an asset or an expense or whatever right so that we've got several things we can have this is a liability so the beginning balance side is starts on the credit side and the ending balance will be on the credit side those are the normal balance sides so if you have an asset which i think you're going to have one here we want to make we want to flip that and start our beginning balance on the debit side additions would be on the debit side subtractions would be on the credit side ending balance would be on the debit side right so wherever our beginning balance is that's where that's its normal balance that's where we want our ending balance in these examples if you have any questions definitely reach out to me and i'll help you out with any specifics that you might have so